are somebody who has an amazing product or service that the world needs to know about, but you're not quite sure how to get the media talking about your product or service, you are in the right place with this webinar. If you want to become a thought leader in your industry so that you're tapped for more speaking engagements or to build up your personal profile so that it's easy for you to get new clients, but you don't have the time to dedicate to handling your own PR or the expertise to do that effectively, you're wrong. And in this webinar, we are going to show you how you can act as your own PR person and generate a ridiculous amount of media coverage for your company. If you believe that to be successful, you need the credibility that comes with press coverage, we can help you out with that. And so let's define what the value of PR is. And there's sort of an industry standard that is outlined in this PR daily pullout. And it, the industry standard is the value of media coverage is worth three times the ad rate. So if the inches that your story composes uh, is worth $500 in ad rate, then that media placement is worth $1,500. And Richard Branson is quoted here saying that publicity is absolutely critical. A good PR story is infinitely more effective than a front page ad. And I think that's definitely true. It's also great for SEO. So focusing on the digital PR aspect, all of these backlinks that naturally occur in the articles as you're being quoted as an expert or as your company or product is being featured in these news stories, those create backlinks to your website and to pages on your website that is amazing for SEO. Obviously, content is king. You need to have a lot of content on your website if you want your pages to rank well. But there are other aspects that are just as critical to making sure that your website ranks really well in the search engine results pages. And that is sending the right social signals to the search crawlers, making sure that you get a lot of Facebook shares and people tweeting out your links, uh, and also links from media coverage or just backlinks in general. If you follow the advice in this webinar, you will get some of the best backlinks that you can possibly get from well-respected websites that are going to do really great things for your SEO and help drive more organic traffic to your website. Just a brief note about the Content Factory. The Content Factory has been in business since 2010. We started as an SEO content agency and then grew to include social media and digital PR because you really need all three if you want your content to do really well. And so my name is Carrie DePhillips. I am the owner of the agency, Jason Myers, who is a senior account executive with the Content Factory is also on the webinar and he will be sharing his expertise. And our co-host today is Ali Walansky. And Ali Walansky is a journalist that we have worked with for years at the Content Factory and we feel very fortunate to have her co-hosting the webinar with us today. And Ali writes for the Today Show website. She, she writes for everything. Women's health, men's health, cosmopolitan, HuffPo, uh, Ali is a prolific writer, and we will hear from her very shortly. So here's what you'll learn today. The secret to getting over 100 reporter queries emailed to you every single day, and it's free. So what are reporter queries? Reporter queries are questions from reporters that they need to have experts answer so that they can finish out their stories and have actual expert opinion in their articles. And we will show you how to get these queries sent directly into your inbox every single day, or at least five times a week, Monday through Friday. We will also give you Ali Walansky's tips on the three most common mistakes that people make when pitching reporters. And you do not want to make these mistakes. It will cost you media coverage. It will waste your time, it will burn out reporters, and so very excited to hear what those common mistakes are. And she'll also tell you what to do instead, how to make your pitch 
have the best shot of success possible. We'll get into how to write quick and professional pitches that reporters respond well to, and we will be tweeting along the way. Content Fact is at Content Fact on Twitter, and Ali Walansky is at Ali Walansky on Twitter. Give us a follow. We'll be tweeting as we go along. We have some tweetable moments. So if you've always thought to yourself, I really want to get in on this Twitter game, I should be tweeting more. Now is a great opportunity to because we'll be tweeting along and we'll interact with you. So take a moment, get your Twitter fired up, and let's get right into the different ways that you can get press coverage. If you want the media to cover your brand, you have a few different choices. You can have a press release sent out, you can have a press conference, you can take the time to build relationships with journalists. You're going to need to start building those relationships well in advance of when you want the journalist to write about your brand. There's a great quote here from Nicole Fallon from Business News Daily about favors don't come for free. And you can also spend a lot of money on PR tools. One of the biggest expenses that we have as an agency is our suite of really sweet PR tools, but they are very expensive. So you can do all of these things and you can hire a staff of PR gurus or you can follow the 80-20 rule. And in my experience, the one service that really embodies the 80-20 rule is Hero, and that's helpareporter.com. 20% of your overall time delivers 80% of the results, and Hero will deliver that 80% for you, and it won't take a lot of time. So take this moment to go to helpareporter.com if you haven't already, and sign up. You want to sign up as a source and fill out that information, and you will be signed up to receive these reporter queries and you will get a hundred more than that. You will receive hundred, hundreds of them three times a day, hundreds of them per day, split into three emails. If you want, you can get a daily digest email. That'll save your inbox if you only want to go through the opportunities once per day. But if you go through the Hero queries, you will find something that is relevant to you and you can pitch that reporter directly, you can cut out the middleman, and you can act as your own PR rep and generate your own media coverage for your brand and represent your brand directly. So Hero is a great tool and it's something that we recommend that all business owners sign up for. So we have a content fact tweetable moment Entrepreneurs, if you do one thing for your business today, sign up for at Helper Reporter emails at helperreporter.com. So definitely sign up for Helper Reporter emails. You'll be so happy you did. And we have gotten clients everywhere from the New York Times and the Today Show to Business News Daily and Brides Magazine. It goes from super mainstream to super niche. And Hero puts you in touch directly with reporters who are looking for expert sources for their stories, and you can be that expert source. And if you continue to be an expert source enough times, you will become uh, somebody with quite a Google profile that is sending all kinds of good search signals to the crawlers and increasing your organic traffic and introducing more people to your brand and just doing good things all around. Sign up for Hero. Here's an example of what it's going to look like. And you will read through all of these Hero queries until you find one that's relevant to you and you can respond directly. And here are a couple of examples of placements that we've gotten for our clients. Here we have Blushing Brides. We got Molly Leahy quoted in a Bustle article. Astroglide is one of our clients, and we regularly get their brand ambassadors quoted in various media outlets. Here, Dr. Jess was quoted in Ask Men. Here, she was quoted again in Your Tango. 
And the one thing that all three of these have in common, besides the fact that they were stories that TCF pitched experts for, is that Allie Walansky wrote them all. <laughs> <laughs> So, Allie, thank you for joining us today and for, uh, you know, using Hero, and I guess Hero is how we met yeah. years and years ago. Yeah, I couldn't live without Hero, or you guys, both of us. Yeah. <laughs> thank no, you. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I use Hero, I would say, at least once a day. Oh, that's great. So, how many, how many um, articles do you write, let's say, per month? And how many do you source experts from Hero for? Just ballpark. Um, let's see. Per month, I'd say I'd write about 10 per week, so about 40 a month. And okay. I, would, I use Hero for almost all of them. Like, sometimes I'll have a quick one where it's like a two-hour turnaround, and I'll just email an expert I already know. But uh -huh. other than that, like, if I'm writing gift guides, if I'm writing, you know, a vacation destination roundup, no matter what, it's a great way of getting a ton of sources really quickly. Love Hero. Love it. <laughs> so let's let's get into the, the negatives of Hero from your perspective, which are you must be inundated with bad pitches all the time. Oh yeah. I mean if I'm writing a holiday gift guide, if I post a query for it, I'll get no joke a thousand responses. And that's great. Oh, yeah. You know, there'll be you know, products and brands I've never heard of that will I'll be introduced to it. But um, there's a couple of things about Hero people need to know, like you can't attach an image or a file. So very right. often people will write, you know, please see this PDF attached with everything you need to know, and there's nothing there. So <laughs> You also can't hyperlink. You can't. You can't hyperlink. You can't, um, you can't attach, though. So like if you wanted to be like, hey, check out my website, that's one thing. But if you're like, right. yeah. So it just adds another step. And also sometimes there's off pitches. Like if I'm writing about coffee cocktails, don't pitch me about hot chocolates. <laughs> so stay on topic. Yeah. Uh, I mean, as much as you can, good. yeah. Like sometimes you could be a slight bit, but if it's a whole other bowl of tomatoes, I can't use it. So I'm just wasting time. <laughs> and uh, are there any other pitching mistakes that you can think of? Oh, um long round, uh, you know, long winded, like if you're going to write me like a Bible when really you just need to respond and be like, here's my three points for how you could cover up under eye circles. I'm going to choose the one that's more succinct because that's going to be easier for me to read, see if I could use follow up versus one that I have to spend 10 minutes reading and be like, eh, actually can't use it. <laughs> that makes sense. So get to the point. Get to the point. Yeah. <laughs> Now, how do you feel about people who respond to these queries and say, oh, I would have a really great response for this. Uh, email me back and I'll send it to you. Or would you rather have them answer the question in the first email? That's happened to me a few times where I'll receive a hero response and it will be like, I know exactly the answer for this. Here's my number. Call me. And it's unnecessary because if I have a tight deadline or I have 400 responses, I'm not going to go and call this person who I don't even know what they have to say to me. I'm just going to go to the next email where I don't have to do all those things. Right. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It's just, it makes it easier for everybody the whole way around if you just do things, you know, it's more straightforward and simple. So how to pitch the right way. What makes a pitch good, would you say? Um, I think it would be exactly the opposite of the things that were, you know, annoying in that it gets to the point. It, you know, it shows that they've read my query and are answering it, you know, in a way that I could actually use it. Like if I say I'm looking for a sex expert, I don't necessarily need someone who, you know, is a yoga teacher but really likes sex, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah, I right. mean... If you give me the, be the kind of expert I need, otherwise you're just wasting your time writing the response when there might be a query that's better fit for your needs. So what do you look for in a source that you think is somebody worth quoting? Um, definitely ones that, first of all, you have to be well written because obviously I'll take your quote and I'll fit it into the context of my article, but if you're writing like, you know, three word snippets, like I'm asking for three points and you're being like, you know, two words for each one, that's not quotable. And I have to either go back to you and have you flesh it out or go to someone else. So 
start out with complete sentences. Be as close to grammatical as you could be. That's really, really useful. Include, like, if you're going to, like, reference a study, maybe give me a link to that study so I know it's real. Right. Yeah, because that happens a lot also. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it does. So with the amount of competition that there is for these queries, uh, if somebody doesn't, you basically don't have the time, from what I understand, to go back and ask for more information because there's somebody else further down in your inbox who probably answered it the right way. Right? Absolutely. I mean, it depends on like on the assignment. For instance, I do every day for Food and Wine these news briefs on their website that I have about three hours to turn them around. And so there's no time for me to wait for someone to get back to me or if they miss a deadline, it's just not possible. So I have to have someone that's fast and efficient. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So how should people follow up with you? Not to, depending on the speed of the turnaround. Like if it is a three hour article, you could follow up quickly. But if you wrote me about Father's Day today, and I don't respond to you today, please don't write to me again later today and be like, hey, I wrote to you this morning and I didn't hear from you, so I just wanted to circle back and see if this is still happening, which is annoying. In email only, no phone call follow-ups, no Facebook follow-ups, because <laughs> I've gotten Facebook follow -ups. I really have. I've had people send me direct messages on Facebook being like, I sent you an email like three hours ago and I haven't heard from you, so I just wanted to make sure you like, saw it. <laughs> Okay, I, I just saw that we have a couple of questions coming in. So oh. here's a question already, and I, I love questions. We love questions. If you have any questions, feel free to send them along the way. There will also be a question and answer portion at the end of this webinar. But by all means, if you have any immediate questions, send them send them out. So the first question, yeah, try, thank you. Type them into the chat box. Question number one is, when using Hero, how am I supposed to know what outlet the journalist is with? Many times they are anonymous, and we ask before we pitch what outlet they are to see if the outlet is, is pitchable. So that's a good question. And Ali, actually, this is a great question for you. Do you ever send out queries anonymously? Maybe your name might be attached, but not the outlet. Oh, I always say the outlet is only because I write for so many outlets that if my name is attached, I don't want people to assume it's going to one outlet when it's for another because I've gotten some feedback where they're like, oh, we were really hoping to get into this outlet and then we saw it was this outlet and that was a bummer. So I'm like, this is the outlet it is. If you want to pitch it, that's great. Mm -hmm. in, in my experience, and Jason, I'm curious to know what your experience with this is as well. When you're pitching anonymous outlets on Hero, it, in my experience, sometimes they're really great outlets, super mm -hmm. high profile. I think, if I remember correctly, when I was quoted in the New York Times, it initially came through as an, an anonymous outlet, and it was only after I had sent in the pitch did I realize what outlet it was for. Uh, in other cases, I sometimes think that smaller blogs like to hide under the cloak of the anonymous tag so that uh, they get more responses and people aren't scared off by their low Alexa ranking. Jason, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. I think your your instinct is right on that. We, we have uh, secured some pretty large placements by rolling the dice and um, uh, responding to an anonymous query. So that's up, that's up to, I guess, how much time you have and, and uh, there's just as big of a chance that you might be placing it with a really small outlet, but there, um, it's been our experience that if, if it's an on topic for, for yourself, for your business, or your client, that it, it is worth uh, responding to the anonymous ones. That's how I feel about it. I think we actually flipped our perspective on that. I think early on, we were like, well, let's, if we can't verify, uh, like you said, the Alexa rating, or if, if it's you know, quote unquote worth our time, let's just stick to the bigger ones. But then we started taking some chances and found that yeah maybe it's maybe it's worth it to to respond to anonymous queries if it's something that matches with your clients needs we have another question Marcy asks uh, we have a decorative baby and wedding time capsules company where you preserve your nostalgic mementos and then open them 20 years later what subject line would you use to get someone to open the email about this 
Um, I think that would be amazing for a holiday gift guide, personally. And I'm not even a mom, and I think that's so cool. I would just be like, you know, um, attention, Mother's Day gift guide, really cool idea. Or something like that. Like, just so I would know that it's for my Mother's Day gift guide article and not necessarily for my article on, like, you know, dating tips. <laughs> that, that alone helps out a lot. Because sometimes I put multiple Harrow quer queries the same day and I'm receiving all these responses at the same time and sometimes people don't say you know what they're responding to so I have to read it to be like oh I bet it's probably not for that one it's probably for this one yeah uh, we have another question Allie this one's right for you hi Allie I'm curious if you use Hayro and ProfNet equally so for those of you who don't know ProfNet is very similar to Hayro fewer queries come through and it is not free which is why we are focusing on Hero. We subscribe to both. Uh, I'm sure a lot of uh, the other agency rep representatives on the webinar are familiar with both, if not also have access to both. So, Ali, do you use them equally? Uh, um, I know we've seen you send both. Yeah, I use both. Um, there's some that I will do PropNet first, only because PropNet will send out your query as soon as you send it. And sometimes right. I have like, you know, I'll have an article for the Today Show's website will, that will be turning around like in an hour, and I don't have time for the next Arrow mailing, so I'll put it on PropNet. But most of the times, I put it on both of them at the same time, just because there's people who belong to one and not the other, and vice versa, and that way I get more responses. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. In pitching via email, if the query is for a product or a new business, wouldn't it help to have an embedded image or link to the website in addition to the brief pitch? I think that that would be good, but correct me if I'm wrong, Ali, I don't think that you can embed anything in a Hero email, can you? You can't embed. You could include a link if you want. You could even say include like a Dropbox link to an image, but you can't put the image in the email. Okay. So I think we're all caught up on comments, and we can move right along. So content fact tweetable. This came via email from Allie. Uh, so when you tweet it, make sure you tag her. Credit is due to Allie on this one. But what you need to do in a pitch is keep it simple, or keep it short and simple. Uh, Allie Wolanski. So that's a tweetable moment. We are looking forward to interacting with your tweets. I hope you've been tweeting along. I've been seeing and, on my Twitter some great tweets already. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. Hopefully uh, you'll pick up a few follows. In fact, everyone take a minute and go follow Ali Wolanski. Yes, please. <laughs> She's definitely worth the follow. I can tell you that. I'm sometimes entertaining, especially when drunk. <laughs> sometimes. Always. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so what to do when you get quoted. Now, not all reporters are as nice as Allie, because Allie, you do a pretty good job. In fact, I think every time, from what I understand, you email the people that you quote to let them know that uh, you've included them in their story, or in your story, oh, right? Absolutely. As soon as I get like an email from my editor or see on Google that my article is live, I'll send the link to anyone that I included in it. Because I just feel like it's the polite thing to do. I know a lot of people don't do that, but I try to always do that. A lot of people don't do that. And in fact, you would be so blown away by how many journalists never let us know that our clients actually made it into an article. And so every morning the PR team wakes up and has some Google searches with their coffee. But uh, Google alerts are garbage. They do not pull all of, the, uh, all of the placements that you get. People can be talking about you for weeks before you'll get a Google alert about it. <laughs> It's and it, it's something that if you think that you're being covered with Google Alerts, you are sorely mistaken. And do not think that just because a reporter didn't email you back or that you didn't get a Google Alert for your name, that you weren't included in a story. So once you start replying to these Hayro hey emails, it's really important that you regularly Google yourself and your company name. Because I think you'd be surprised at, at how often journalists won't let you know they're busy I understand uh, but that just means you need to get your Google on and uh, maybe look into some tools that will help you do that more effectively 
So action item number two, when you get quoted, make sure that it's accurate and email the reporter with a correction if necessary. This very rarely happens, but sometimes they'll spell your name wrong or sometimes they'll link to the wrong website instead of your website. Maybe they'll link to a website that is similar but not definitely not yours. Uh, so always verify the accuracy before you take step number three, which is promote it via social. So promote all of the placements that you get. Tag the reporter and outlet. Uh, make sure that you're smart about your social promoting. If there are other complementary non-competing businesses that are featured in the article, give them a tag in your tweet and Facebook status too, so that the more people who get those pings that they've been included in a tweet, the more people are likely to retweet your tweets, to interact with your treat, tweets. It's just really great for engagement across the board to be uh, liberal with your tagging. So once you've tagged everyone and promoted it via social media and maybe even scheduled a few more tweets in Hootsuite to go out throughout the next week, continually promoting that placement, make sure that you thank the reporter. So even if you didn't get a nice email from somebody like Ali Walansky who uh, is letting you know that they covered you or your client in a uh, story that they wrote. Take the step to thank the reporter anyway and just say, hey, I saw that this went live and I promoted it via social, but I just wanted to drop you a quick note to say thank you. Because what you really want to do throughout this process is build a rapport with these journalists and eventually create real relationships with people who cover your industry. And that's going to result in, instead of having to fight it out through all of these HERA responses where there's just a ton of competition and Allie has to sift through a thousand different responses to find the ones that she can use, uh, the reporters will come to you directly once mm -hmm. they've worked with you and have established that you are a source worth working with. So, Allie, how often would you say, do you just go right to the source? Oh, very often. Like, I email you guys for Dr. Jeff's quotes at least once a week because I know that you are going to deliver exactly what I need when I need it. Right. And uh, how many of the relationships that you have where you can just call somebody and ask them for a quote and you know that you're going to get a good one that you can use for your story, how many of those people uh, would you say are like percentage-wise ballpark? Uh, have you met via Hero? Almost all of them. I mean, sometimes it is other places like, you know, ProfNet or some event or whatever, but I would say the gr gross majority are from Hero originally. That's awesome. Yeah, it's hey, definitely so worth the investment of no dollars, isn't I it? Love it? I love when free things are great. <laughs> yes. So, guys, I'm not kidding. Make sure you sign up for Hayro hey emails. And those of you who already subscribe to Hayro hey emails and maybe haven't been going through them as regularly as you should, uh, go through them every single day. It will be Hayro hey will teach you things, sometimes things that you don't want to know. <laughs> um, but you will uh, definitely get media coverage and you will find relevant queries for sure if you just make a habit of regularly going through all of the Hero queries. So that's what you do when you get quoted, uh, four steps, and again, make sure you want to share it across all of your social media channels. We got a placement for the Alternative Board, which is one of our clients in Inc. Magazine, and so here's how Jason promoted it across the different social channels. And it's a little bit different for each one. And then, I guess just to circle to TCF's own case study, I know that we're fangirling out quite a bit about, or in Jason's case, fangying out about <laughs> Hero, but it is <laughs> so <laughs> legit. <laughs> it's it's, it's well-earned. We right. should interject that we're not paid or anything like that because, like I said, sometimes we come off as uh, as advocates, but it's only because, like Ali said, it's so rare that something free works so well. So I know. We have no vested interest other than to be good PR people, and I'm sure Ali has no vested interest other than to get good good uh, experts coming in. So Yeah, it just like, makes my life easier. Anything that makes my life easy, I love. I'm easy. <laughs> <laughs> 
So for TCF, I, for TCF, I ran a 30-day HARO experiment where for 30 days I went hard at HARO. And usually I'll get to it when I get to it. If I'm super busy, sometimes I'll let it slide. Definitely more than I should, but for a month. I made sure that as soon as those opportunities came through, I was responding to them as quickly as possible because it's also very important that you respond quickly to a queries. Because, Allie, is it true that you will go with one of the first relevant sources that you get, especially if you're in a time crunch, or do you oh. wait for the uh, query to expire? Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, like, I will read them till the end, use them until the end if I need to, but if I'm on a time crunch, as soon as I find one that gives me what I need, I'm done. So there's a definite first mover advantage to absolutely. jumping in early on these yeah. HARO queries. Yeah, absolutely. Like, if I don't get a great response early on, then the ones that come later, they are have a fighting chance. But really, when you have a, ti yeah, a time crunch, that's what it is. First good one in is the one you go with. Yeah, I, I can attest to that as well. Sometimes you'll have a tendency, well, I'm, I'm too busy. I'll get back to it right before the deadline. And I've had times where I had a perfect uh, source and just got the, oh, sorry, I'm all full. <laughs> you know, so it, it, it's it's worth moving to the front of your to-do list if it's if getting those placements is important to your daily routine. And I've also noticed a lot of times when you put a deadline, people will see that deadline and they'll decide they're going to send something like at that deadline, like they're going to wait until that very last moment, like because they assume you're working on it then. But it's not true, at least not for me. That's very good to know. Yeah. The early bird gets the worm, and yeah. you're doing yourself a disservice if you wait until the last minute to send in your queries. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, I've noticed that a lot of times, especially for some of the higher profile outlets, the turnaround times, the deadlines will be super short. Mm -hmm. Like, Amber will send it out, and you have an hour and a half. You better get on your horse and start your pitch engines because you don't have much time to get that in. So if you're putting off your hay rows until the end of the day, you're definitely going to be missing on some opportunities that you would otherwise have an in for. Yeah, that's why I wouldn't necessarily advise doing the digest version for that reason, because with the digest you'll definitely miss opportunities that had a small window. I have everyone on my team get those emails three times a day. I think it's worth getting the three emails a day. Yeah, because that way you won't find out something was great for you, but it was five hours ago. There is nothing more heartbreaking than that. When you see the perfect query and then you go to respond and it's just, you, you, oh, just so you know, so everyone knows, if you respond to a HARO query and it is after the deadline, your email will bounce back to you in the saddest fashion possible. <laughs> it is so depressing. When sucks you, to be you. Oh, sucks to oh. be you so bad. Because well, what I to yeah, what I try to do, and I don't know if it's entirely kosher, is I put my email address in my query on Hero so people can reach me after it expires if they want to follow up. You are a Hero rock star, and I, I wish I, everyone would do that. I break all the rules. I'm a real, I'm a rebel, but I do that because I want to see what you send me, even if it's after the deadline, because I might have an article on a similar topic next week, and then I'll need you. That's a great point. So do you recycle queries? So if you see a good pitch and you think, mm, not for this article, how often do you reach out to the person uh, later on? Is that something you do on a regular basis? Oh, my God, all the time. Like if I get an assignment today where I need a food scientist, I'll go through my Gmail inbox and Google the word food, and I Google, I'll search the word food scientist, and I'll email previous food scientists that have been, you know, pitched to me that I may have not worked with before. That's a really great point. Yeah, so absolutely. If I don't get back to you on something today, I probably will in the future. Good to know. And I, I have to imagine that you're not the only one like that. Do you have no. a lot of reporter friends? That Do you guys have conventions and you talk about what you do and do not like in Hero pitches? You can share oh some God. of that wisdom no. with us. <laughs> we call our conventions happy hour, and yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we totally do. Oh my gosh, give me a fly on that wall. We will have to go out for a drink sometime. Absolutely. <laughs> so TCF's 30-day HARO experiment. When I was going hard at HARO, I sent 21 pitches. Uh, I got six placements for 28.5% success rate, which was pretty solid. And some of the 
uh, placements included Success Magazine. Grandma, very excited to see that. <laughs> Media Shower, 10,000 hours in 10 minutes. Uh, I talked about SEO and quality content. So there were some really good pieces of media coverage that I was able to get and all of these different outlets linked back to TCF site and in some cases linked to specific blogs which is great because when you get those direct backlinks not just to your home page but to inside pages uh, on your website whether that's a services page or a blog post that's ranking really well that's going to send extra link juice and, and rainbows and unicorn sunshine to your website in a way that's going to impact SEO over time. So if you continually go hard at Hayro, hey imagine what your backlink profile would look like over three years. It, mm -hmm. it would be really impressive and it would help make all of your content initiatives more effective. So the backlink aspect of going hard at Hayro hey cannot be understated in my opinion and it's really difficult to be able to put a dollar value on the backlinks that impact SEO. Nobody's going to be able to tell you that, but you can kind of feel it and you can kind of see it in the amount of organic traffic that's coming to your site. And if you link heavily towards certain pages and not others, you will start to see that those, the pages that do get the link love rank better for keywords than those that do not. So here's a fun tool that a guy named Jim at Clixie.com told me about a while ago, but BuzzSumo, if you guys haven't heard of BuzzSumo, BuzzSumo is super awesome, and it does just about everything but make you coffee in the morning, but it outperforms Google Alerts. One of the things that it does really well is it offers a, an affordable brand monitoring tool that will outperform Google Analytics when it comes to people mentioning your name or your brand online and also you can set up an alert to where anytime anybody links back to your website it'll send you an email and so that has been a very useful tool and BuzzSumo does all kinds of incredible things that no other tools I have found online do um, but again one of those is outperforms Google Alert so check it out it's affordable. I think the, the pro version is like $99 a month, but there's a free version that is quite robust. Hey, Karen? Okay. Yes? Since you're geeking out on this kind of stuff, um, we did have um, a comment um, from Megan said, totally not a question, but a side note that TalkWalker alerts are free and better than Google alerts. She says it sends her about 90% of placements. So oh, yeah. thanks to Megan for that tip. I'm not familiar with TalkWalker myself, but I'll have to check it out. I'm not familiar with that either. I'll have to check that out. 90%. <laughs> Pretty cool. Oh, and then uh, somebody else was chiming in and saying that nobody tells them when their hey row placements go live. Uh, we were on a best of the year roundup once and nobody told them. Oh so my God. <laughs> that's pretty brutal. I don't oh. understand. And I mean, it's the first thing I think of. Like, as soon as I get an article, I want to share it with the people who contributed to it. Not and Ali, we have another question. Oh, go ahead, Jason. I was just going to say, not to mention, when you, I mean, when you're sending these uh, alerts to people that they've been quoted, the chance of them returning the traffic back to you seems like it would just sort of keep that karma going. Absolutely. Most of the time when I send people a link, I'm like, hey, thanks so much for your input. Here's the link. They almost always tweet it after. It's in your best interest to be a good person. <laughs> Well, hopefully there's some reporters listening, too. I hope so. <laughs> oh, somebody else says, I really like Mention.com, picks up more than Google Alerts. We also use Mention, but yeah. I find that BuzzSumo outperforms Mention. And BuzzSumo has a really cool name, so. <laughs> it's very true. Um, so, Allie, somebody wants to know, Alicia wants to know, uh, she says she would love to hear how you prefer an introductory email, as discussed earlier, the one month before pitching a product email and how often do you respond to that initial email so when somebody has a, an introductory email and they want to hit you up for something later but that's down the road a few weeks how, how what's the best way for them to go about making that first introduction 
Oh, just that. I mean, just send me an email. Be like, hey, I noticed you wrote about this or that, and I have a product or a service or a destination that I feel like would be right in line with what you write about, and I would love to, um, you know, keep in touch. And I will respond if I'm on deadline. I may not respond that day or that week, but I will respond. Does it help when they follow you on Twitter, too, and show you a little social love? Does it keep you? Absolutely. I okay. think, yeah, absolutely. There's definitely been times when I've, like, done crowdsourcing even on Twitter, and I've been like, hey, I need looking for this. And people have discovered it and emailed me via, because I mentioned it on Twitter. Good to know. Yeah, and I always share all my articles there, too, so <laughs> it helps. There's your tweetable pro tip. We've been on this screen long enough. I hope you guys have gotten it out. <laughs> and I hope you are liking, favoriting, retweeting, interacting with Content Fact and at Ali Wolanski because we will uh, show you some Twitter love back. And so now we're on to some case studies. I know a guy who got three clients placed in one Forbes article, and that guy is on the webinar right now. So, Jason, do you want to talk to us a little bit about that? Uh, yeah. So <laughs> this was a good, this was a recent uh, case study for when I was doing PR for Fair Trade America, and uh, I guess the moral of this pitching tale was that I was very thorough in the pitch and gave, like Ali had mentioned before, I gave the writer everything I felt that they would need. I was trying to, I always try to make the writer's job easier uh, so that hopefully all they have to do is cut and paste, and I find that you have a better chance of being quoted the way you want to if you have a, a well-written quote. So with this with this pitch um, for to a writer from Forbes, uh, it was for for uh, eco Halloween candy and fair trade just happens to have quite a few licensees um, that fall under that category. So um, not only were we able to get a mention for our our primary uh, client, which is Fair Trade America, but we also got some of some of their commercial partners like Glee Gum and Endangered Species Chocolate uh, mentioned and linked back to. So just by being thorough and giving them the information, they ended up using all of it. I mean, it doesn't always work out that way, but uh, it's definitely good to, to give as much information as you'd like to see without going overboard. So that's my, that's my most recent uh, success story, I would say. With, with that. <laughs> and to be clear, this Forbes uh, opportunity, this came in through Hayret, right? Correct. Got it. So another case study, this one, we plugged Hayro because we love it. This is Lynn. She's another account executive for TCF, and she got uh, quoted in Inc. Ten more leadership experts share their best leadership tip. Hello. And she helped get tab in that article by yeah, John Brandon. I wanted to also just sort of tie this together. Um, prior, now I've been working with, with TCF for a while now, but Prior to that, I, I did have a background in publicity, but it was with, with the music industry only, so I had, all my contacts were in one spot. So when I started working with Carrie on all these different clients, I was like, I was sort of dumbfounded. Like, how, how am I going to be an expert on candy or alcohol or whatever the topic was at the, at the point? And that's where Hero is great because you don't, it, it sort of eliminates that need for all of those contacts initially. Uh, it just puts you directly in touch with the people that are looking for specific quotes. And once I figured out that that system works, I was able to teach Lynn. So it's, it sort of went from Carrie figuring it out, getting her aha moment, teaching me the Hero system. Lynn was a protege of mine, and now she outperforms me. She does even better than I did when I was doing the PR for the alternative board. So the moral of that story is just that it works, and um, regardless of what your background is, because I don't, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think Lynn had a ton of, of PR experience before she started working with Hero, so. No, we moved her up from the writing department. So that was her first experience with figuring out PR, obviously, under our supervision. But I in the last year, she, oh, yeah, in the last year she got, we just tallied it up for an annual report. It was 171 media placements through Hero for TAB. There are just a ton of different business queries that go out every single day. So if you're a business expert or by virtue of the fact that you are a business owner, have expertise in certain areas based on your own experiences with running your company. Check out the business and finance section of Hayro because there are all kinds of opportunities that you can take advantage of. And I have done that myself. So 
that's how I got on CNN. That's how uh, I got quoted in Success Magazine. And again, there's the media shower. Those were from the 30-day hero experiment. But hero is hey. where it's at. And uh, it's something that you can utilize right away. And you can start responding to reporter queries and acting as your own PR agency and getting yourself out there uh, and creating real relationships with reporters who cover your industry. So one of those might even be Ali Walansky. Maybe. <laughs> probably will be. I, I post a lot. It probably will be. <laughs> Actually, uh, we got another comment uh, from Emma that says, I love interacting with Ali on Facebook. She cracks me up daily. Oh, okay. my God. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what's going to happen next. Uh, we will send you a follow-up email that links to some good resources. We have a pitching guide, and I'm pretty sure that a recording of this webinar will be included in that email. But we will send you an email with all of the relevant information to help you take your hero pitches to the next level. And if you are so inclined, we would love it if you would reply with your testimonial. This is hopefully the first of many different webinars that we will be hosting on a variety of topics. And if you have feedback, we look forward to reading it. So you can send that to me directly, Carrie Lee, K-A-R-I-L-E-E, -E, at contentfac.com. And you are also going to receive an invite to our exclusive Facebook group for DIYPR. So this is a Facebook group where business owners and even agency representatives will let you guys join too. And everyone can kind of figure out the pitching process and share stories of what's worked well for them and share the pitches that landed them big placement. And maybe we can have workshops where people can put in their pitches and we can kind of dissect it as a team and figure out maybe you should be altering your message a little bit. And if so, here are the ways that we would recommend. So we will send you a link to that Facebook group. And if you are so inclined, uh, we will give you a 25% discount on the first month of services. We offer trading packages. We white label with other agencies. Uh, about 30% of TCS business comes in white label through other agencies. So we are happy to play with others and we play nice. And that brings us to the final step, which is the Q&A with K&A. So if you have any questions for Ali Walansky or for Jason or for me, please send me, send me your questions via the chat. And we have one already. This is from Jim. What tips do you have for monitoring highly competitive queries? In my industry, every query gets a sh uh, S load of responses, and I don't stand a chance. I don't know that you don't stand a chance, Jim. I think that it's all about getting in early and getting in there relevant with, with a relevant response. And also, if you can kind of approach it, I like to approach hero queries from the side sometimes. And what I mean by that is if a reporter is looking for three SEO tips, I will include one that I think a lot of other people are going to include, but I'll throw two other ones in there that I don't think anybody else is going to think of because they're going to be going for you know, the first three that come to mind. So if you can come up with unique tips that the reporter isn't getting, you know, two dozen other responses that say the same thing, you've got a better shot at standing out from the crowd. Allie, do you think that that's an accurate statement? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think that even if there is a ton of responses to a query, there's going to be a lot of responses that aren't very good. So if yours is doing the job, then you're going to be on top, even if there's 200 or 300 or 1,000. So, Ali, maybe you can answer some, a hunch that I had. Um, since you send them out through ProfNet as well, your queries, do you uh, get far less responses through ProfNet because it's a paid service than you would with Hero? Oh, absolutely. I would say, like, if I post, it, with the exception of gift guides, when it, everyone seems to have their pants on fire during um, gift guide time, but in general, <laughs> Like, if I put the same query on PropNet and Hero, I might get on PropNet a couple of dozen responses, and on Hero, I'll get a couple of hundred. Okay, that's what I thought. So that might be a tip, too, if you want. Uh, I mean, because not every writer is putting them out on both services. So that might be something in the favor of one of the more, uh, one of the paid uh, services. 
you might yeah. get some opportunities that aren't getting uh, bombarded by the masses. Something to think about. Oh, absolutely. That's definitely Got true. <laughs> there are smaller ones too. Source Bottle, S O U R C E B O T T L E, sourcebottle.com. Uh, I subscribe to theirs. We all subscribe to everything. And That's right. Those, yeah, they're, they're not as great. You won't get as many opportunities, and they're not for as high profile outlets, for sure. Whereas Hero really gives you a, a wide variety. I'm constantly surprised by the different types of outlets, and now bloggers are getting into it. As well, I know we use Hero for Astroglide when we're working on Astroglide content to source experts. Oh, absolutely! I think it's almost like when you belong to dating apps. If you only belong to one app, you're going to miss out on the people who are on the other app. So you could belong to lots of apps, and then you'll meet lots of people. It's a good analogy. Yes. Uh, Carrie, there was a question earlier in the chat uh, when someone is cold pitching what headline email captures your attention. I don't re recall you asking that. I, you might have, but um, I wanted to circle back to that anyway. Does Hero automatically auto-populate the, the subject line, or is there is there a way that people can capture your attention when they're responding to, say, a, um, a Query. Definitely, I've gotten varied um, subject headers from a single query. I would say the best thing to do, unless we're like best friends and hang out every week, don't have a title of an email be like, hi, quick question, or just wondering, because then it doesn't tell me anything. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, so have the title of your email be in some way related to what the email is about, whether it's a query or a cold pitch or anything, just so I know. because. That really annoys me when it's quick question and then it's like a pitch that has nothing to do with any questions. <laughs> right. Plus that would make it easier for you to just scan through the email headlines too when you're... Right. Yeah, like if I'm working on something, I'm like, oh my god, that looks like something I could use. It just makes it a lot easier for me to find you. There you go. There's your <laughs> answer. <laughs> Allie, we've got another one for you. What's hey. the best advice... Melissa wants to know, what's the best advice for pitching an individual as an expert? My current client is the CEO of a media company and getting other media to cover him has been tough. What, what uh, advice do you have for Melissa? I say just be exactly that, like, you know, email and be like, so my client is an expert, he's been featured in this, this, and this, He'd, he could speak on, and then maybe four talking points related to his point of expertise that he could talk on, which aren't necessarily what I'm working on, but it will put the thought into my head when I'm working on something that kind of is in that school, and I'm like, oh, wait, this expert media dude might be the one that's right for me. And maybe not, but at least I'll know to try. And Kim wants to know, if you click the master box in Hero, I'm assuming, do you get all of the queries? I think so, but oh, no. you'll, you'll know, because when the queries come to you, they'll be organized by, I think it's medical, and legal, and then there's business and finance, and then there's science and technology, there is food and travel, and if you're not getting three times a day an email with 50 to 75 queries in it organized by subject, then click a different box, because the master box wasn't it, but I do think that the master box probably should get you what you need. We have a few more questions. Mm -hmm. My experience with Hero is that they seem to prefer someone in the New York City area. Allie, you're based in New York City. Does it matter yeah. where somebody lives? Not at all. Not at all. I, I, need, I want someone who can answer the question I have. And if you're writing to me from Germany, I don't care. So maybe you can answer my question. Okay. I think maybe that might be more relevant for TV opportunities. Maybe, so. yeah. Right, if it's a TV opportunity, then that makes sense because they're not going to want to fly you in. But if it's for um, a writing an article, then uh -huh. it's fine. I mean, I don't care where you're, as long as you're available to answer my questions, I honestly, you could be from anywhere. What do you do when a journalist doesn't respond to your init initial pitch? Do you follow up with it or do you let it drop? Allie, if, if you haven't responded to somebody, does a follow up help at all? Or if you wanted to get back to them, would you have done it already? Do you find follow-ups to be helpful? Follow-ups really are not helpful. I mean, yes, it's very possible that maybe, like, you're on the bottom of the stack from today and I haven't seen you yet, so if you follow up, it'll move you up. And I understand that's why people follow up. But for me, it just means instead of there being 1,200 emails in my inbox, then there's 1,205, you know? <laughs> 
So I'll get to it, but following up just kind of makes everything seem bigger. Stacy wants to know, have you tried the U Pitch app? U, just the letter U, Pitch. Someone emailed me about it today, actually. I haven't opened it up yet, but I literally today got an email about a U Pitch app, so I guess it's a thing now. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, literally, though, it must be, like, very currently a thing, because today I got an email in my inbox about it. <laughs> Maybe somebody from the U Pitch team is on this webinar. Maybe. Be like, hey, guys, I got it. This is a follow-up, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think that about wraps the time that we have. Allie, it has been great having you uh, on, on the webinar. Yeah, I had a great time. And again, everyone, here is Allie Wolanski's Twitter handle. Please make sure you follow her on Twitter, as other webinar attendees have attested to. She is fun and fabulous on social media, and I agree. So everyone will be receiving an email from us shortly. And Ali, again, thank you so much. Thank you yes, so much. Well. It was really fun. Hopefully Appreciate we'll have you on again soon. Yes, absolutely. Thanks All to right. everybody who attended as well. It's been yeah, great. thank you. We, we've, I'm surprised at how many people showed up and how many stuck around it. It's been great to see. And we learned a lot too. <laughs> we did, yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you.